Happy Tuesday. It is April the 9th, 2019, and I'm Eric talking at you as always from beautiful downtown Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, where, you know, lies are a lot like Jaeger bombs. Sure, they seem like a good idea when you start out, but after enough of them, somebody gets hurt, somebody gets fucked up, and somebody ends up losing their job. It's sad. It is. How's everybody doing tonight? Gord, how are you? How's Milton? Milton is uh, getting chilly, uh, windy as a motherfucker, and uh, yeah, life today is what life is. Say hello to some fans if they're listening tonight. We picked up some new fans in San Antonio, Texas the last time. So hello to you guys if you're listening and everyone else around the world. We have a special guest with us tonight, a guy I've been waiting to have on the show since long before I met Gord. Uh, this is uh, our friend Paul Gord. Why don't you do the honors for me, buddy? Cool. Um, well, everybody is my, one of my best friends, Paul. Um, uh, great guy, as you know. I've talked about him on the show before. Uh, nice guy. I met him. He got me a job of first working. And, uh, so it's his fault. Uh, it is, yeah, it's fault. So you can blame him. It's all right. Um, but yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, he's a great guy. And, uh, Welcome, well, welcome, Paul. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Thank you, my man. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I've heard such amazing things. Started listening. Um, pretty amped up and uh, ready to go. All right. Um, now. Now I kind of want to get Jaeger bomb. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Objection! Oh, whoops. Okay, that didn't work. Um, played the wrong sound effect there. Hi, James. Um, uh, yeah, Paul, you can't hear these sound effects I use. I don't know why, but uh, I play them, and they're funny to me, but you guys don't know that. Trust me, I'll play it. I'll just break for you right now. Oh. I work at the break for 11 hours. I have to and we, of course, here at the Champion Tree Entertainment Company, love the brick and don't share his opinions whatsoever. Um, I uh, usually have some topical news stuff, but tonight I was very busy with a personal issue I have going on uh, that I'm not allowed to talk about on the air. Um, so I don't have very much to talk about. Uh, there's Chinese spies that are very bad spies breaking into Trumpy's golf course. I thought that was freaking hilarious. Uh, they basically stopped her at the gate and said, are you a spy? And she said, yes. <laughs> and they went, you're not very good at this, are you? And she said, no. And then that was the end of that. <laughs> um, this is just getting, I, I think this is just a really bad deflection tactic. They're trying to take it, uh, just attention off the fact that he's a douche for a little while and it's not working because they just all look stupid now. Trump, like, the nightmare that Trump is, is just hilarious. He's, uh, he's pretty fantastic. Um, <laughs> great for the media. I, I wish we had something better to talk about up here, but, uh, we got Justin, so. Yeah, and that whole thing is just such a cluster fuck. Oh my god, like... <laughs> I don't understand. There's literally just nothing good. And the funny thing is, 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 as fucked up as it is here, it's still nothing, anything like has gone on in any other country. Like, no. They're not necessarily, these are not like uh, serious things as much as my feelings are hurt. <laughs> yeah, they, well, see, the, the problem is, one thing you can't do in Canada really is anything to offend natives or women. And uh, so, firing the most high profile native woman ever that's just bad planning it's all like honestly like they couldn't have done anything like worse like like why even go to work i don't like i don't know what's really lower than what he's done but she's gonna win the election in a landslide and she's not even running yeah it's true 
Did you hear about what happened in her uh, in her uh, her riding area? I heard something I heard about her something tackling about her Bret Hart this Bret weekend, Hart but... this weekend, but no, her no, in her riding. Problem. There's 16 other people that are like running. Yeah, yeah. 14 out of the 16 have dropped out of the race for in her. support for her. Dang. See, 14 see, of the 16. That's what a good yeah, but does. those are the 14 that know they're not going to win anyway. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is true. But they did it. They all did it. Came out of it in solidarity. It was, it was actually it was, it's an incredible thing. You just you just don't see or hear about this happening. Like, you really do. You guys watch Brooklyn Nine Nine at all? Never, never seen an episode. Yeah, I have. It's I don't really, like to. Really I generally tend to avoid anything that people perceive as funnier than me. <laughs> Which nobody is. So uh, well, you can watch everything. So what's the problem? So until it's uh, Brooklyn Nine, Eric, then I'm not in. So what happens is uh, Holt, the captain's running for president. Uh, there's a woman running. They have a conversation, like like the three men, and they're like, "Oh, don't worry about her. We can put her in so that he would look good." Like it's just funny because it's, it's true, right? <laughs> like, it's, it's like that's what actually happened. Terrible, horrible place. Well, Paul, in the business, that's what we call here a segue. Because that <laughs> gets us right into this whole concept. Now, it's, it's kind of a buzzword, and I want to be careful not to be that guy. But um, there is a lot of discussion these days about what's being called toxic masculinity. And uh, I you know, some of it I buy, some of it I don't. Um, but I know you came on the show because you felt very strongly about this. Why don't you try to explain to the people who don't uh, aren't as enlightened as Gordon and I uh, what this subject entails? Well, for one thing, like I'm saying, like as a white male, like like I have it easy. Like fantastic. <laughs> like when I grew up, like I have never told my never told. Be careful when you're walking down, like when it's nighttime or never. Like, yeah, like as a white male, I have it easy. My wife works for uh, a woman shelter, and I call her my superhero because she does amazing things for um, the community. And what she she's not a social worker she does marketing and fundraising but what she does see is horrible and ever since i met her she really um opened my eyes to what the real world is like i i come from a sports background i come from that that be a man throw some balls get up and walk it off yeah but paul, paul, paul is a jock yeah, like uh, we would have hated each other. But back a different in the day. kind of job. I'm not going to lie. A different kind of job. Like I didn't. You I wore didn't those hair until the. You wore uh, those hair Come on. Yeah, exactly. you're a gay bag. <laughs> I'm not a fan of you at all. Like, <laughs> you. But like, 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 especially being Canadian, going down to the states, and it, because I threw hard, I got full scholarship, and sure. it's just sure. incredible. Like my entire scholarship was. Eight hundred fifty thousand dollars, like just because I could throw a ball hard, and like and yeah, and yet, yeah, and yet, where's my being emotionally available scholarship? Yeah, we, yeah, like come on, like come on, kid, and like if we're not gonna give out athletic scholarships, like let's let's throw out the money a little Like, but um, coming from that toxicity of like. 30 men or 30 boys being together all year long and like, oh man, I gotta fuck her or like, oh yo, like, like just, or like, yo, like, guys being bros. Yeah, being yeah. the most amount of bros ever. And, and like, let me, let me just clarify for those of you who don't know, you don't have to be a jock to be a douche in this area. Uh, we're, we've all done it. Um, like, uh, I, I can't throw a ball. I don't even own a ball. But um, I, I, I still do this when I'm in a group of men. I, it's a man thing. 
Which is bullshit. Men things don't exist, but we we make them exist so that we can get away with it. Even when you go to the bar, like oh yeah, go to the bar, just trying to have a conversation, like like my drowness just comes out a little bit, and like it just it just happens, and like. I, you know what? I can't stand it when someone uh, takes the middle stall next to me and looks at my bronus. When there's three stalls, take the end, douche. Yeah, like, like, it's such just common sense. Like, or like, if you're like sitting down and like there's like four spots, like, why sit the down? Fucking yeah. End? Like, don't yeah. Decide, no. Why? What are we gonna share a milkshake? Get on the other side. Yeah. Like, yeah. Are we gonna hold hands? Like, you can, like <laughs> yeah, go sit over by yourself. But like, <laughs> but um, like essentially, what like? Uh, just uh, let me clarify. I don't like it when anyone sits next to me. That's not a, just a no, gay that, guy thing. That, that's my social anxiety as well. Like, I, I can talk to anybody, but like, come sit beside me and come into my personal space and like, it's just, please don't. Yeah, when people do that to me. I just make them uncomfortable. I generally, <laughs> I've said it. I've said it before. I generally don't like to talk to men or ugly people. So if they can just not approach the table, it works out well. But um, that's true. Um, so yeah. Now the thing that I think people don't understand about this is there is no biological evidence that this is a thing there is nothing that makes you manly like that um it's it's all in our heads we make it up we're raised to believe it but we're not we're not born that way no not so what i have is masculinity is not organic it's developed at a young age to teach boys that anything girly automatically means you're a sissy or not a man of course and luckily we're in one of the better cultures for it i mean that kind of indoctrination is what leads to groups like ISIS having power. Um, not to take it to such a grand scale so quickly, but really, in North America, we're not as bad as the rest of the world, where we're genuinely they are taught that women are inferior. Well, like one thing that has has always soured me was when I was at Canada University. Like one of my marketing teachers said to me that, like in. Um, Afghanistan, when they're walking with their cow, the woman walks first, the man walks 20 feet behind the woman, and then the cattle walk 20 feet behind the man. And it's all for bomb. Yeah. The bomb goes <laughs> off, the woman kill, will kill die, and then they'll, they'll go another way. That it, it, is like, brilliant. I, that <laughs> like, I remember, That's I'll never forget it, that. The most insane shit ever. Like, but it's true. Like, that's what other women in other countries actually go to, and that's why they they try to come for refugees to Canada and the United States. And how oh, not? But like, then you come This here is and gonna you, be you know, one of those days, isn't it? Re- like politicians that care about the stupidest shit. <laughs> I. Don't know what you're talking about in the sheerest way. Um, that was an Andrew Shear reference, in case you didn't get it. Andrew Shear. Um, leave abortion alone, you fucking dick. Um, um, so, don't put your signs and don't put them in the garage. So, well, no, you guys are. Uh, you you've got Doug Ford right there, championing this for us. So, what a hero. <laughs> okay, so we know it's, uh, you know, in advertising and uh, just the entertainment in general, it's always been a thing. How do we how do we convince young guys not to go this route? I don't think Gillette's going to do it for us. Or Old Spice or... Like, Gillette has come out with a whole man line, and trust me, I've used it... 